Hey everyone, it's Das Time, and this time around we are continuing Alter Ego. Uh, we'll look real quickly at our stats. We are 16 years old at this point. We are way too stressed. Uh, we, we've had multiple bouts of suicidal tendencies at this point. Um, we're, we're not even at 17 yet. Uh, our family is uh, crap. Our intellectual sphere, though, is very good. Our social sphere is good. Vocational, don't really care about that. We're confident, we're expressive, we're not very gentle, we're happy, we got a little bit of trustworthiness, we have $926 in our pocket, we currently work for a fast food restaurant, because that's basically all that would currently hire us, we are in a relationship, um, I thought we had a girlfriend, what did we end up breaking up that relationship to do something else, anyway, we're going to meet someone in to start this off, uh, we'll go uh, outside the school, and uh, we'll go with, um, did I hear Marsha last time? She's very attractive. Let's go with Marsha. She accepts. Good. And let's go on a date. Well, having a suit at Marsha's house, the phone rings. She picks it up and looks around the room nervously. She walks out of the room with the phone, and you think you can hear her say, I told you not to call me at home. She puts the phone back down and proceeds if the phone never rang. You casually ask her who it was. Her voice cracks says, no one, and her eyes dart around the room. How do you feel about this? It's suspicious. Well, you keep pressing her for information until she finally tells you who was calling? No. She never mentions it again. You know what? If she was cheating on us, whatever, but I'm not breaking up. But she's very attractive. Let's, 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 let's keep our cards in our hand. Let's not, like, overplay things. Let's not do too much. And we are a handsome couple. We are a handsome couple. Anyway, we're kicking off the next little thing here. You're shopping at the drugstore. It's almost closing time. The manager is letting the customers out one by one, keeping the door locked so no one else can come in. Suddenly, the man in front of you with cash register takes out a gun. That's a holdup. He smells heavily of alcohol and looks as if the gun could be fake. Brave. Try to stop him. You move solely on instinct. You attempt to wrestle the gun from his hand as you thought it was a fake. He is easily subdued. You acted bravely but impulsively. I was expecting to get shot right in the face and that'd be the end of us. At least we wouldn't have killed ourselves at that point. Next up, you and a group of friends are getting together to go to a movie. Your best friend and his date are picking you up at your house and the three of you are meeting everyone else, including your own date, at the theater. Doorbell rings and you're greeted by a dark-haired beauty with sparkling eyes and devastating figure. She smiles at you and tells you her name is Cheryl. Your friend is waiting in the car because he isn't feeling well. In the car of the movies, you and Cheryl make small talk. After all, your best friend isn't feeling up to par. You wouldn't want Cheryl to have a lousy time and resent him. Besides, your date seems to be so engrossed in the movie, she doesn't seem to mind either. Midway through the movie, your friend pulls you aside and asks if you wouldn't mind taking Ch Cheryl home. He knows she is enjoying the movie, and he is feeling too ill to stay. Compassionate. Sorry for the friend. Take Cheryl home. What will we do? Take your date home first? Take Cheryl home first. Take your date home first. With you and Cheryl alone in the car, Cheryl mentions what a great friend you must be and thanks you for being so considerate all the way around. She invites you inside her house for a few minutes. Oh yeah, let's go inside. Let's see what's going to happen here. Cheryl gets you a cold drink and sits down next to you on the couch. She jokes that she feels as if you were her date for tonight. After all, you took such good care of her. She thanks you again and kisses you on the cheek. After she kisses you, she keeps her face close to yours. She looks at, at you for a long second and begins to bring her lips up close to yours. Oh yeah. There we go. One kiss leads to another and another and another. You are completely taken in with Cheryl's advances and leave exhausted. Will you ever mention this incident to your date or your friend? No. Never. <laughs> get it? Fuck no. Uh, a group of friends are getting together for a toga party. Oh yeah, toga party. Sure, let's go to the party. You arrive at the party stunningly draped in one of your mom's best sheets on the table there is beer, wine, and hard liquor. Good. Someone mentions that there are drugs available for sale from the person at the other end of the room. What would you prefer to have? Hard liquor? How wild would you like to get at this party? Let's get extreme. <laughs> okay, we can either go mildly wild, wild, extremely wild, or just go fucking insane at this party. Should we go insane? I've done that before. You're just going to wake up bad in the morning unless we do something really ungodly ridiculous. But i got to see what's going to happen here. Are you planning on trying to meet any girls at this party? Eh, sure, why not? 
The combination of your mood and choice of substance use, use, makes you rowdy and obnoxious. No one will bother with you, but where it gets back to your girlfriend that you were out looking for you for a good time, she dumps you. Of course. No, that's, yeah, that's actually about what would happen normally. Okay, I guess I'm not in a relationship anymore. Yeah, I figured I wasn't. Yeah, let's meet someone new. We'll go near home this time. Did we? I swear we already tried all of these at this point. I think I've broken up with every one of them. There we go. We're on a date with Marion now. Marion is late for your date, and you're forced to sit in the living room and converse with her somewhat no nosy parents. Her father looks at you squarely in the eye and asks, Son, I'd really like to know what your plans are for my daughter. What would you be inclined to say about this? Um, nothing. I don't quite understand what you mean by that, sir. Um, there we go. Try and avoid the question makes it appear as if you take Mar Marion's father for a fool. He begins to have doubts about you. No, I don't know what he meant. Does he mean, like, tonight? Does he mean next week? Does he mean three years from now? Ten years from now? What, the, what, what did he mean by that question? He's an asshat. That's what he is. It's time for a senior prom. Are you planning to attend? Of course. Why not? Who are you be going with? Um, a steady girlfriend. Someone I'm currently dating. Didn't we have this before and I fucked it up? A steady girlfriend. You must have met her in your dreams because you aren't currently with a steady girlfriend. You'll have to go to the prom with her in your dreams, too, because now it's too late. Oh, great. So we missed the prom. Awesome. We move through the adolescent phase of life. Family life can be very rough during adolescence. Even though your family expects you to take charge of your life, no one wants to let you have the freedom that you want. Judging by your progress through life so far, your family life has not been very good. Spending time at home is like going to battle. At times, you aren't even sure how you even can even live there. Physically, you have not been very healthy. Socially, the phase of life does present its share problems. Most of these problems fail, uh, f uh, fall into the category of girls. Life must have been pretty simple before they showed up. Your social adjustments to this phase of life has been remarkable. Although you do not have a steady girlfriend at the present time, there's always the next phase of life. Now, regarding your emotional development. You are not the most trustworthy teenager around. You know, perhaps you can avoid getting into any more trouble than you have already have by developing a better set of ethics. Nah. It looks like you have had your share of testing the limits and doing things on the spur of the moment. It also looks like some of those things haven't really turned out for you the better. Risk taking is a large part of this phase of life. You should take care that you don't let it evolve into a plain old foolishness later. You seem to be enjoying most of what you do, even though you experience the blues every once in a while. It's nice to see that you are not having a depressed, traumatized life. Even though on occasion explosive outbursts is common in most adolescents, you seem to have everything well under control. You seem to be sensitive and gentle. You certainly have a good head on your shoulders. You are not only book smart, but you also have plenty of common sense. See, I raised a great kid, didn't I? Now that your adolescence is almost over, it's time to be hurled out there into the abyss of the real world. I'll bet you didn't know what everything you did so far was part of the fake world. <laughs> Welcome to adulthood. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. Proverbs thirteen nineteen. Oh God! So now we have many more choices that we can make because we can. We need. We need to get into. Can, yeah, there we go. Say, I guess we're gonna pick Marion. We're gonna. So, oh, now we can live together with Marion. Okay. Also, we have down here is this car. Welcome to the world, wonderful world of major purchases. In this icon, you'll have the opportunity to purchase the material possessions you've always dreamed about. You can use either cash or the easy-to-arrange credit program. While you're at this icon, I will encourage you to spend, spend, spend to your heart's content. But please know that spending beyond your means can, and in most cases will, be hazardous to your emotional and physical health. Also keep in mind these ancient words of consumer wisdom. Caveat emptor. Um, yeah. In this module, you can purchase several items. Would you like to make a purchase? Sure. How fabulous. Your salesperson will be Bob Roberts. What would you like to purchase? A watch, stereo equipment, photo equipment, video equipment, a computer, sports equipment, clothes, automobile, library of books, boat, toys, and goodies for the wife and kids. Uh, I'm going to buy a new stereo. You have two choices, an average sound system with the standard round dials and buttons, and a high-tech model with lights, switches, lasers, beams, and speakers that a small person could easily live in. 
I don't need that big of a thing. Let's do it with the average one. You have chosen a stereo that does the job without taking you to the cleaners. You have shown your resistance to peer and sale, to peer and sales pressure by not going for the fancy package. What would you like to pay for this with? I'll pay with cash. Thank you for cashing in on this once in a lifetime value. Come again soon. Okay, let me look at my um money. Oh, we have a thousand sixty-two, and we have an acquisition of stereo. Aren't we lucky? Okay, we can look over here. We can get loans. Okay, that's great. I do not want a loan. I'm not even going to probably mess with that. We can... Let's go for a full-time job now. I'm sorry, you seem to already have a steady job. You would be overextending yourself greatly by another job. Please reapply after you worked. Let's get your lightens up. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to leave our damn job. Desire for career change. Good luck in finding something better. I doubt we will. Let's go to a full-time job. What would you like to do? Health service, health service two, entrepreneur, teach, there we go, entrepreneur, that sounds good. Congratulations, you start work immediately. Awesome. I'm sorry, you can only use this icon if you're married. Welcome to the marriage icon. While you're at this icon, you can make arrangements and plan and enter into marriage. Or, and I'm sorry to have to be so blunt, leave a marriage. What would you like to do? Let's become engaged, fuck it. How much money would you like to spend on a ring? Uh... Give her a family heirloom. I hope she likes it. Do you plan on asking Marion's parents for their blessing? Yes, even though her father is an asshat. How can Sir? This is how her parents react. Her father thinks you are untrustworthy, and judging by the status sheets, he is right. He doesn't approve of this aspect of your personality. All in all, your future in-laws are not exactly crazy about you, but if it will make their daughter happy, they will go along with it. In their opinion, she could have done a lot better. Now you must pick a way to propose. Have the waiter bring the ring and dessert after a romantic dinner. Take out an advertisement in the newspaper. Take a traditional route and propose on your name. Do it your own way, none of the above. Take out the advertisement. Definitely an 80s approach to getting engaged, but effective. Marion is flattered. Now for the big moment. You're waiting for her to accept or reject your proposal. She accepts your proposal. You're on your way to a wedding day. Congratulations. You're driving in a car with a friend. He runs over a dog. Oh, that's just fantastic. I give up game. I can handle killing myself. I can handle all the drugs, skinny dipping, getting ped killed by pedophiles, doing amateur porn. But nope, we kill the dog. I'm out. End of the game right now. Okay, I just... Anyway, when he runs over a dog, he seems rather insensitive about it and doesn't stop the care. I'm angry. Tell him to stop. He tells you not to worry about a stupid dog that was running around loose. Demand that he stop the car. He just ignores you by now you are too far away from the dog to walk back and try to help. Let negativity affect your friendship. You begin to realize that you and, and your friend don't see eye to eye on many important matters in life. Your friendship begins to grow stale. Because he's an asshat. <laughs> That's my answer to everything. Warning. This episode contains a subject matter of a sexual nature. Do you wish to continue? Nah, no, no, okay. A friend asked if you would be kind enough to drop off a package at the house of someone he knows lives close to you. Sure. You arrive at the address. It is a huge split-level house with Rolls Royce, a Jaguar, and a Porsche parked in the driveway. You ring the bell, and an older, very attractive woman comes to the door in a sheer negligee. She is evidently just stepped out of the shower. You deliver the package, mm -hmm, and turn and you walk away. She asks if you would like to stop in for a drink. Hell yeah. Let's stop in for a drink. Sit down on the couch and make yourself comfortable. She asks you, what kind of drink would you like? Something hot? Something with a little kick to it. There we go. She fixes you a drink and places it down on a long marble table. As you scan the room, you notice expensive-looking artwork, vases, rugs, sculptures on every wall and in every corner. She invites you into the adjoining rumpus room. Mm-hmm. Give her a rumpus, all right. The rumpus room is filled with the hunting trophies, a lion's head, some elephant tusk, and a zebra skin. Oh, God. We're gonna die. <laughs> Her husband is an avid lover of sport, but she thinks it's barbaric. You finish your drink. Okay. Oh, sure. Um, excuse yourself and leave. Stick around for a while. The woman turns to you in a deep, sexy voice says, Enough. We both know what we want. Take me. Become her wild <laughs> jungle savage. I much prefer to become her wild jungle Ben Savage, but uh, unfortunately, Boy Meets World is not available right now, so let's just do it anyway. 
You barely touch her before she lets out a blood curling yee and collapses from exhaustion. You were the best, darling. Now run along before my husband comes home. He's insanely jealous and would absolutely shoot both of us on sight if he ever were a notion of the wild animal you are. Just then, the door to the rumpus room swings open. A man in a pith helmet and khaki uniform peers into the room. He twists his hand, handlebar mustache nervously, but calmly asks you what you were doing, it with, uh, doing in his house alone with his wife in his rumpus room. Tell me, you just came to deliver a package. That's what they all say. I suppose the package was so heavy it took two of you to carry it into the rumpus room. The man squints his eyes and works himself into a rage. Oh my god. <laughs> Scout your leech, how dare you attack my innocent wife? Prepare to meet your maker. He raises to the wall and pulls a double barrel shotgun. The woman screams, No, my darling, I just had all the rugs cleaned. The cold shotgun barrel produces firmly against your neck. Click. The lights come on, you wake up, you've got to stop eating. There's anchovy pizzas so close to bedtime. Okay, that was the best thing yet, and the perfect way to end up this episode of Alter Ego. Anyway, guys, I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.